Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how to use the tree generator inside of 3D Code. Actually, I'm trying to figure out how to use it too. I accidentally discovered it and I thought it was a really cool hidden tool inside of 3D Code that not many people talk about. And so we're gonna spend some time using it, show you some features as well, and then talk about whether it's even worth knowing, whether it's even worth using, or it's just like one of those extra tools that are just there in different softwares that no one even talks about or looks at. All right, so we are inside of 3D Code 9. You'll find this tool uh, right here under Objects, Tree Generator, right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on it. And once you click on it, you get this option up here. It says Create New Tree. We'll click on that. We'll give it a few seconds. And then boom, look at that. You have a tree. Like, damn. That's a good looking tree, not gonna lie. I mean, I posted a video last year on how you can like make trees and stuff. And when I made that video, I had no idea a tool like that existed. So it almost felt like, almost feels like I, I did all that work for nothing. But <laughs> so when you pull out this tree, you get this, uh, you get more options here and you can like mess around with these settings to get some different results. So I played around with it a little bit. So complexity is pretty much how many branches you have up here. So right now it's at 100%. If I bring it down to maybe like 40%, you know, you get like fewer branches, right? And if I bring it down to maybe 1%, you'll get nothing. <laughs> so you won't even have a tree trunk or branches. So I feel like that's the uh, density of your branches and your complexity. So, and you can even go over 100%. If I go 200%, damn, look at that. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think you should go over 100%. Maybe just stay with 100. <laughs> Cause this is, uh, this shit is overkill right here. Especially if it's a tree that's like this far away. It's like, why do you want to like, you know, have that, that much density. But if I hide my leaves, let's see what it looks like with just the branches. This is like way too much, right? I mean, I don't know. I mean, maybe it could be cool. Maybe this could be something that you can use if that's what you're going for, right? So you can, you have like a lot of like opportunities to just like play around with the complexity. But let's just go back to 100% because I feel like that was like a good place to be at. And so this right here, it's called, this one's vertical growth strength. So I think if we reduce this number, I think it shortens down a little bit. Yeah, I don't, honestly, I don't even know what it's doing. Anyways, it did give me different, a different variation so that could be something helpful and then main, tr main trunks count so we have one trunk right now one main trunk which i'm guessing like this part right here so we can probably add more let's let's put two see what that looks like so now we have you know more complexity on the tree trunk right here and i guess you can keep increasing here too but i felt like number th having three was probably like a good stopping point anything after that it didn't really it didn't really like do much like you could barely tell any difference. And then main trunk curvature, it's at 100%, I don't know. Let's do 50%, let's see what that does. Oh. I feel like it controls like how curved it is. Cause you see how like it's a little bit straight. Let me turn off my grid. You see how like it's a little bit straight on this side now, but I guess in general, it's like pretty stiff. Like if you put it at 100%, it's a little bit flowy, a little bit more organic. Yeah, I think I think 100% is a good place to be at for this. Branches, level, what does this mean? Shit keeps freezing. Let's go maybe, I don't know, 50%. Oh, wow. Interesting. So with I think with branches level, it makes it in such a way where your branches get pushed upwards the more higher the number. Let's see what 100 does. Please save your working file because of programs. Oh, <laughs> it crashed on me. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's try this again. <laughs> what we learned just now is that don't mess around with this value. Let's go to the branches length option. Right now it's at hundred percent. I'm guessing the lower the number, the more smaller the branches are gonna be, or shorter the branches are gonna be. Yeah, this is cool. I like this. It's a vibe, you know. But yeah, that's cool. Branches thickness 75%. Let's see. Let's do maybe 25%. See what that looks like. Damn. Look at that. This looks sad. So I feel like 75% is probably like a minimum you need to get branches. Branches curvature 100%, 50%. Let's see what that does. 
so it becomes a little bit more straight. If I put it on like 10%, what does that do? It's not a big difference, honestly, but I do feel like it's getting a little bit more stiff, which may or may not be helpful depending on what you're doing. And at 100%, it's a little bit more curved. I feel like 100% works the best. You know, you're getting that nice organic look. Start angle, end angle. Start angle for branches. The angle of growth of the branch to the parent branch is randomly generated between two values. Interesting. Damn, if you hit Control Z, the tree just disappears. I lost my tree. Oh, there it is. Oh, so it's gone. Damn. So if you hit Control Z, or if you click away from that option box, the, the option goes away. So you'll have to generate a new tree now. Interesting. That's annoying. Create new tree. Oh, we got the same tree. Oh, so, so it retains the settings. Okay, that's good. Man, when I made this video, the beginning, I was like, I'm gonna show you guys how to use this. But I'm actually learning how to use this as well, right? <laughs> now, we'll, we'll all learn together. Minimal radius, 0 0.9. Let's see, let's make it one. What does that do? Like, I feel like I'm just getting different iterations. Like, I'm, uh, it's, it's hard to like figure out what exactly is happening when I'm changing these values, but I'm getting different variations, which, which is good, I mean, to some extent, right? But I guess that's pr pretty much it. The complexity would, I would say, would be how many branches you want. And then if you pair that up with other options, you get even more variations. Sounded like branches length, I think by default it was 100. Let's go back to 100. Yeah, so 100 would give you like this default three. And if you lower it down, then you start getting like more unfamiliar shapes. What if I go like 15%? Man, this looks creepy as hell, dude. This looks like someone's hands are like coming out of here. Like, I love it. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> now let's look at the next option, which is roots. If you unclick the make roots option, you just don't get any roots. It's just like straight up. But I feel like it's good to have some roots, right? And I think the features are like very similar. You know, you got again, roots curvature, roots length, complexity. So if I go to roots curvature, if I lower this down, it's just gonna be, I'm guessing it's not gonna be that curved at that point. Like it's gonna be like more stiff, more straight. You know, it looks cool. I feel like when it gets too curvy, it just gets a little bit too chaotic. And you know, realistically speaking, like if you have like a ground plane, you're not getting, you're not gonna see a whole lot of root to begin with, you know? So I would probably keep it like at a minimum. Like the complexity, I wouldn't go, like 50% feels good. If, it, if I do 100, I might, I think it might be too much. Yeah, it's just adding more stuff to it. I mean, definitely. And then, you know, what's also happening is that it, it's everything is so close to each other. So it's going to be like tough, like selecting multiple pieces of them and, you know, creating different variations. I would say like start with like smaller number. And then if you take it in, into Blender, putting it in your scene, you can always like, you know, cut it out and like paste it on different parts. Roots position, 5%. What does that mean? The position, oh my God, keeps going away. The position on the main trunk where roots start to grow. Okay. So if it's like 100, what does that do? Ah, uh, so if you go 100, the, you, your roots start growing from the very top. And then if you go like a lower number closer to zero, you get them at the bottom. If it's zero, what does that do? Right, so it's completely at the bottom part. Interesting, okay. I guess we'll keep it that. Main roots count eight. Oh, okay, so I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I can increase some more complexity. If I do like, I don't know, 15. And get more. Okay, that's cool. Cool, let's hit generate leaves. So we got some leaves now too, yay. Now here's the thing though, let's say you're happy with your tree, with your leaves and stuff. I wouldn't recommend exporting out your tree with the leaves inside of Blender. It's because it exports it out as like a single polygon and you got like millions and billions of like leaves up here. And so your tree is just going to be like really heavy. So what you might want to do is either make your leaves inside of Blender using like a very low poly mesh, or you can maybe export out like one or two leaves from 3D code and then do like a particle system or something. Like the one video by CG Geek is pretty good on making trees. 
highly recommend checking that one out. If you use the techniques that he showed on that video and then pair that up with this tree, then I think that should be helpful. So I'm gonna get rid of the leaves for now. Let's say I'm happy with this tree, right? And now this is like a good, this is a pretty solid base to start from. And then I can add more details on this. I can like sculpt more on this. So let's go up here. I'm gonna have to like switch to sculpt mode first. Now if I grab the muscle tool, with the muscle, what I can do is I can kind of like come up here and do this, you know, add this kind of detail. I want to change my shader actually. Let's just go back to the clay shader. Yeah, this one right here. So with muscle, you can actually, you know, add stuff like this. Add more detail to this. It's more like tree paneling or something. I don't know how else to explain it. And then you blend it as well. And then I think once you have some sort of like detailing happening, then you can use stencils on it to add some like more detail. These might be a little helpful, adding these cracks. And then I can like further sculpt on top of them, blend it and smoothing it out to some extent. I'm just going back and forth with these like detailing. And I feel this could be like a good way because now you have a tree that looks believable at least, you know? When I was making these from scratch without the tree generator, it was just like a little bit hard adding that believability factor from scratch. Yeah, it's not, not bad, you know? For the amount of time I spent on this, maybe like less than 20 minutes, not bad. Okay, so let's say this is the tree and I'm happy with it. So we'll just select the, the tree layer and just retopo by a decimation just to maybe 8,000. Yeah, I guess we'll stick with 20,000 for now. I guess I can probably go lower, but I don't want to like experiment more. All right, bake, bake with normal map. You know what? I should probably save this. <laughs> <sighs> All right, I'll make sure it's uh, 4K. Oh, I'm so sorry. Now we wait. All right, so we are done baking. So let's go to, I forgot. Yeah, let's just go to paint, file, export objects and textures. Or you know what, I can just directly just do this. Let's, can I do an app link? I know there was a way, yeah, export to Blender. Yep, let's just do that instead. Let's call this to retest. And get rid of emissive and displacement. We'll have normal middle instructions. Yeah, okay. Textures, just select a folder where you want to save your textures. Okay, so we did get it and it's um, kind of big. My boy, huge. Whenever I export stuff out from 3D Code to Blender, everything is like always so big. But yeah, so we actually have all the shaders here too, but I usually like, I usually retexture the whole thing. Just make a new texture. And from here, the normal map that we had, I'm just gonna drag and drop that. So now when I render it, I'm hoping I get the detail Right, so without the normal map, it was like that. With the normal map, boom, we have that detail. So whenever you're exporting out your models from 3D code, make sure you always like bake your normals because then it'll, you know, retain some of the detail. And let's switch to cycle, see what that looks like. So it looks pretty decent. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, it look, looks cool. And then you can just use like a tree texture on top of it. And uh, the normal map, instead of using the normal map for a tree texture, just let it be for this tree up here. I like using mega scans for this because they usually have like really nice detailed textures. Actually, I'm just gonna drag and drop the trees that I made in the past. I think it's right here and just copy the texture from there. So let's click that. Oh, where'd it go? Yeah, click that, click that. Control L, link materials. Let's go ahead and delete this. 
and it's gonna do tab a let's do a smart uv project that one usually gives me good results so you know it's pretty good you know so this is what I, I built this so i built this like simple scene using those trees and you know just copy pasted it use it instances put this character up here and so you can get like some you know decent results from this as long as you have a good high k, a high 4k texture i would say the tree generator tool is good for if you're making like one tree where you want to spend most of your time on in those cases i would say it's good but if you're doing ideation or kid bashing i, I might I don't think I would recommend it. You either you might want to just make your own low poly trees in Blender or just download or buy them because it's not worth worth it where you just, you know, spend hours modeling a generic looking tree. Now, if you're in a situation where you want to design a tree that's very unique, then I would probably do that in 3D code because you get a lot of controls and you can get some really cool results. But if it's just something generic, then probably stay away from it. But yeah, just wanted to talk about that this week. and. Um, if you you guys can check out my older videos as well. I got some more stuff on 3D code and I've got the the video on making trees in 3D code as well that I posted last year. So check that one out as well. Other than that, thank you for coming by. I'll see you guys in the next one.